Dan Marsh here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Now we talked to each other a little bit and mm. something special is going on. It's kind of, it's kind of sad actually. Mm. 2014, September 1 marks the centennial of the extinction of the passenger pigeon. Martha. Martha. Martha was the last individual. Had a name. Her her mate, if you will, was George. It was a patriotic name, George right. Martha Washington, right? Yeah, that was the last the last of a species. Now, as we talk here, this is a passenger pigeon mm. mounted, yes. obviously, and, yeah. and we, we know probably from the early, early 1900s. Correct. Probably the late 1800s, early 1900s. So we hear the stories. We yep. know that uh, these things were documented. They would blacken the skies. Right. I mean, they would come in, and, and sometimes it would take, fifth, you know, 14, 15 minutes right. for these flocks sometimes to Sometimes days. Days would go by before the flock would completely pass. Billions, billions of birds. If you can, uh, if you can imagine uh, the rock dove today, the common pigeon. Right. There are maybe 2 million individuals today. There might have been 8 billion species or individuals of passenger pigeons in the, in, in the time that they existed on this planet. So. When you imagine that, people say, oh, the, the, the rock dove is a, a trash bird, right? It's everywhere. This, this species was much more abundant. It's probably a little bit bigger than our morning dove. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, this probably lost some of its color, but it, it has. has. This is an old mound. What was the coloration of these animals? The back on the male was blue, a bluish gray. Right. If you could imagine a kestrel, American mm -hmm. kestrel, that bluish color on their backs, the males. That's what you would see here. The breast was reddish, orange, mm -hmm. and it faded from a red to an orange onto the belly. The males were called the blue comet because they flew 60 miles an hour. Wow. Wow. Right. And you can imagine billions of birds in a flock all flying 60 miles an hour. The, just the, the sound of their wings in the yeah. air must have been amazing. These animals nested in, in huge colonies, and that's the other sort of detail about this animal, and, and that was part of their downfall because uh, the market scale harvest, and I want to emphasize this point, it wasn't hunters individually going out and collecting and harvesting these animals that led to its demise. It was the market scale harvest with nets, sulfur gas, uh, sulfur battery gas. gas. Yeah, they would burn sulfur underneath the trees at night as the birds roosted above in, in these huge roosting areas, and it would asphyxiate the birds. They would fall out of the trees and they would just bag them up and take them to market. We saw a, a depiction of uh, this actual area where they would bait these birds in, they would take one of these and tie it to it, call it a stool pigeon. The stool pigeon, that's where the word stool pigeon comes <laughs> Explain from. Explain that. So it's kind of a, it's, it, it is especially sad. What they would do is they would take one individual, sew its eyes shut so it couldn't oh, no. see, and then they would uh, put it on a, a, a stand, the right. stool if you will, and they had strings attached to the stool, they could wiggle it to make the bird flap and, 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 um, and, and attract the atti attention of other passenger pigeons. They would come in to see what was going on with this bird, because they are a, a social species, or they were a social species. There was grain on the ground, bait, they, so then they would come down land, start to feed, and these big nets that we, sort of like you'd see in, in collecting turkeys for reintroduction. Right, nests. Those are rocket nests. Right. These were more of a, uh, it was a rope. There was a rope on one side on, that had tension on it, and it sort of flipped the net over the top of the birds and captured them in and, and huge numbers. Those were, those live birds were used in trap shoots primarily. And the, our, our legacy of trap shooting today comes from the passenger pigeon. As we stand here and hold this, yeah. this, this fantastic animal that blacked the skies out at one point. Unimaginable. What are the thoughts that come to your mind when you, when you sit and look at this beautiful animal? A lot of people focus on the loss of the passenger pigeon as the message of this species, but the legacy of the passenger pigeon for me is that this animal raised the, the sound of the alarm to what human beings could, could do to those two um, wildlife populations. No one can imagine that this species could be wiped out. And when it happened, uh, there were a lot of other species on the same path, white-tailed deer, American bison, uh, elk, um, pronghorn antelope, a lot of the waterfowl species. And, and people made a, a really vigorous response and, they, and our conservation movement started from this event. A lot of people understand now that hunting is a management tool. It is. And the biologists and scientists get together and say, okay, we this needs to be our amount of population. Therefore, mm. we can take this many animals. And right. we take that good good protein, yeah. that wonderful organic protein, <laughs> and use it to, to, to put on our tables. So right. there's, a, there's a very um, 
interesting thought process the way we all work together out there. Right. I think if human beings take responsibility, right? right? And I think we all should take responsibility. It's just a good thing for us to do in general. Right. But if we have changed the landscape enough that many of the predator species are gone, then we have, we in some ways have an obligation to step into that role because if we just allow deer populations to expand and boom, we would get into a boom and bust cycle where right. populations would increase, we see uh, uh, environmental degradation and, the, and it would damage other species of plants and animals, then the population would rise again and crash, rise and crash. It would not, it's not the way that, that nature works well and we can, and we can participate in it because we are part of the system. Anyone that values wildlife, no matter why you value wildlife, right. whether as a hunter or a fisherman, or as someone that just enjoys watching it, um, we, we should support those efforts that go to, to ensuring those species persist into the future.